Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is Sunday, the 12th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2023. I have a, shall we say, very controversial thought to share with you. And it is not meant to destroy people, or, but people get angry. Well, <laughs> some people will be upset with this thought. And it has to do specifically with Judaism and the Jewish nation state that they are not viable. Judaism is not viable. Uh, neither Talmudic Judaism or um, Mosaic, the Mosaic Covenant, is viable. Uh, and also why Islam isn't either, but in a secondary sense. <clears throat> See, how do I explain this? I could work with the scriptures and bring this forth, but... I want to keep it a little short here and develop that later. I was thinking about this, and it, because of the conflict in the Middle East, my mind is, as a an, as an, uh, former engineer, you know, you're, you're a person that you're tasked with, with coming up with solutions to problems. So why not try to solve the problems of the Middle East while I'm at it? As I was thinking of the difficulty here, and there's all kinds of difficulties involved, and you can approach it in different ways, but I was thinking, we have this, this Jewish state over there, the, the Zionist project, that is engaged in, in ethnic cleansing, has been engaged in that for 75 years, and, and now they're engaged in overt genocide that nobody can really deny this is truly genocide. And really, Hamas is only an excuse for what they're doing to Gaza. Because they're not really getting at Hamas, they are simply killing the population. Especially when you cut off water and fuel and food and power uh, and communication, because you don't want people to find out what you're doing there. That is genocide. That is not uh, a military action against Hamas at all. When you use Hamas as an excuse for targeting hospitals and schools and the International Red Cross and churches and mosques and the United Nations facilities there. Uh, going after a mosque does not justify any of this. So it's really going after the Palestinian people as a whole. I think it's, uh, you know, trying to get rid of your guilt by eliminating the evidence of what you did from your own thoughts. Trying to salve your conscience by eliminating what's uh, causing you guilt, like all these Palestinians that have been dispossessed by your Zionist project. So this is not a, d d meant to be hostile, really, but it's uh, to understand something and why Judaism, uh, let's see, Mosaic Judaism, the Mosaic Covenant, was never intended to be the final state. In other words, just temporary. Why is that? Well, it's it's actually if we just I'm just gonna approach this logically, there's only one God. There's only one God. The God that revealed himself to Moses was not a local deity. Was he? He was the creator. He was the God of all nations, the God of all creation. So <sighs> the Mosaic Covenant was given to a particular small nation, 12 tribes actually, uh, of a fairly small population, and it's still uh, is a small nation with a small population. How can that be the religion of the one true God? It doesn't make sense. Humanity does not start with Jacob. It starts with Adam. And we're told of the, the problem that came about in the garden with the fall of Adam and Eve. And man became sinful and subject to death. Um, and so all of a sudden, we have this history that continues on. And then all of a sudden, God chooses Abraham and says to Abraham, I'll make a covenant with you, 
and to your with your descendants, and in you all the nations shall be blessed. See, so the, it, with Abraham, God is saying, I'm going to make a covenant that will bless all the nations of the world. Not just, not just a few of your descendants, but all peoples, all nations. And you'll be the father of a multitude of nations. Well, in the New Testament, we, we find out that we are, we are of the faith of Abraham. Those who are God's people are those who are of the faith of Abraham. In other words, who trust in God. Like Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him for righteousness, counted to him for as righteousness. So God's the, the faith God intends is a is a system based on trust in him and that's not what the law was at all. And it was only to a particular small group of people, those he brought out of Egypt. Again, there was a couple other exceptions in there that are revealed in the scripture. So it's not specifically a a kinship relationship, a a natural relationship, a genetic relationship, but of the faith. Rahab trusted in God. The harlot trusted. Ruth trusted in God. And they became part of God's people. Now, God's plan could not have been restricted to just this small group of people. How many are there today? What, 14, 15 million people out of a global population of around 8 billion people? How is that possibly God's plan? Does not he want all people to believe in him? All people, the scripture says, God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. He sent his apostles out to preach the gospel in all the world, to all nations. So clearly, Christianity is meant for the entire world. But Christianity comes from Judaism. Judaism really becomes Christianity. So Judaism, the Mosaic Covenant, and God's working with that particular people, basically the, the descendants of, of Jacob, what you have is just a temporary chain between God's promise to Abraham and going back to God's promise uh, in the garden that a seed would, of the woman would come that would crush the head of the serpent. And so God chose Abraham for a particular purpose to bring forth a lineage that from which the Messiah would come. And the final covenant would come, the eternal covenant, the new covenant that is prophesied in the prophets in Jeremiah chapter 33, excuse me, 31, and Ezekiel chapter 36. Goes into quite a bit of detail where God says, and it is a, as the promise to Abraham was unconditional and unilateral, it wasn't it, uh, conditioned on Abraham's works and obedience, but rather simply a promise from God to him. So also the new covenant is unconditional and unilateral. The only thing we have to do is trust God and believe what he's promised, like Abraham who trusted God, and it was reckoned to him for righteousness. God, God regarded him as right with him because Abraham believed him and trusted him. So it, the, But the law of Moses was not of faith, but a system of works. He that does the commandments shall live by them. You have to do all the commandments. There's a blessing and a curse. Curses, a long list of curses. So the only way you get blessed under the law is to obey it perfectly, abide in all things that are written in the law. Only one person has done that, the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. But see, 
in Christ who made a complete atonement, a true atonement for the sins of the world. That was his main mission in his coming the first time. He will come again very soon, it appears. Very soon. But uh, without Christianity, without the Messiah having come, what's Judaism? It makes no sense. It's, it's like a, a sentence without an ending to it. It's a story that, that breaks off and then there's nothing. So what is the purpose of God calling uh, the descendants of Abraham out of Egypt, giving them a law, and then bringing them into a land? Is that the end game? Is that the whole picture? Is that the purpose? No, there was a promise of the Messiah that Moses spoke of and the prophets speak of. And there was even an indication of when he would come in the book of Daniel. And he did come. There was a reason why he was being looked for. He came, walked among us, taught, and then fulfilled God's true purpose, which is Isaiah 53, that he would render himself a sacrifice for the sins, not only of the Jewish people, but of the entire world, because he is the God of the entire world. And now, as with Abraham, salvation and forgiveness and the promises of the new covenant are to all who trust in God, who trust in his Messiah and his finished work. We are saved by the grace, the unmerited favor of God, through faith in Jesus Christ. And it's not of works. It's not of acts of obedience. It is not of, by doing good things. It's not by trying to make a deal with God. It's simply trusting in what he has done for us and trusting in his promises. In Christ, we are saved in him through faith in in Christ, in the Messiah. That without that, Judaism is a religion without a head. I mean, it's not complete. It has no purpose. And Judaism as a system, as the Mosaic Covenant, ended when Christ fulfilled the law by keeping the law and then also fulfilling the, uh, taking the curses of the law upon himself. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. He became accursed for us, an innocent man. So death could not hold him. And then he rose from the, from the grave on the third day as God's proof to all the world that Jesus in Christ had indeed accomplished the redemption, the atonement for the sins of the entire world. Again, Judaism makes sense as a link between Abraham and the Messiah, something, a custodian that kept those people preserved through that period of time. But it is not the final purpose. It cannot be. It is only for a particular people in a particular place for a particular time. And that time has passed with the Messiah. The proclamation of the law ended. And again, indeed, a generation later in 70 AD, God removed the temple to demonstrate that the Mosaic covenant no longer mattered. It was obsolete. So rebuilding the temple is silly. It would... if. You don't want to be under the covenant of the law anyway, because by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. Unless you think you can keep the law perfectly all the time, all the days of your life, trusting in your own works, your own goodness, stand before God in your own righteousness. Well, I don't think you're that good. I certainly am not. But Christ was and is, and he fulfilled the law for us, and atoned for our sins. His blood is our atonement, the perfect atonement, the real atonement, an innocent man dying for the sins of the world. 
How can one man do it? Well, it's his death. If we're in him, we have, we have fulfilled the penalty that's due us. The wages of sin is death. What does not abide in all the things in the law is under the curse, and the curse is death. So Judaism makes sense only as that intermediary period of time between the promises made to Abraham and their fulfillment when Christ the Messiah came. Indeed, according to the Apostle Paul, the promises to Abraham was to Abraham and to his seed, singular, that is, to the Messiah, to the Christ. Same word, one's Hebrew, one's Greek. The anointed one. So, because of that, assuming this is true, and again, we're talking about the universal God, the one God, the God of all nations, the God who created all things, the God of all men. Whether they know it or not, there's only the one God. Is that not true? I'm talking to Muslims, too. But that one God had a plan for all humanity, not just a tiny group of people. That was just a, that makes sense only, again, as that transition from the promises to Abraham that in him all the nations of the world would be blessed and would be, he would be the father of many nations, not just a few, of many nations. And the fulfillment of that promise in God's unfolding his much greater plan than the Mosaic Covenant in the Messiah, in Jesus Christ, the eternal covenant, the promises of which are a, he will forgive us all our sins. He will take away the heart of stone. He will give us a new heart, a heart of flesh. He will write his commandments on our heart. He will give us a new spirit, and his own spirit will dwell in us, and we will be his people and he will be our God. That was not meant for merely the physical descendants of Jacob, but for the entire world. Jesus, the Messiah, at the Last Supper, the Passover Supper, when he took up the cup of redemption, I believe, and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. He took up the bread before that and broke it, the unleavened bread, and saying, this is my body, which is given or broken for you. He gave the true meaning to the Passover. Then he took the wine, again, the, probably the fourth cup, the cup of redemption, I believe, and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. His disciples knew what he was talking about. They knew he's referring back to the promises in the prophets of God making a new covenant that would be different than the covenant of Moses. Moses spoke of him. He said, another is coming after me that is like unto me. And it shall come to pass that everyone that does not hear, the, the, hear that man shall be cut off from God's people. Indeed, it's true. There is salvation only in one name, and that is the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus, or Isa, or Jesus, or whatever your local language is, the person who is the son of David, the son of God. So, again, Judaism only makes sense as that connecting link, as that temporary faith, until the permanent, the eternal covenant comes in through the Messiah. He brought that in on his first time here. He was incarnated and born of a virgin in Bethlehem, the city of David. And then he kept the law, proclaimed the law, proclaimed the promises of God, and proclaimed he was the Messiah, and indeed he proclaimed he was the Son of God, 
in various ways. Then he allowed sinful men, the rulers of the people, to crucify him, and he rose the third day. Revealed himself to his apostles, to others, to witnesses, even 500 at one time over a period of 40 days. Then he ascended into heaven. From there he shall come again. And so we await his return. The Muslims await his return. The Jews await his coming. Now, so my point is basically that that uh, Judaism, of course, rabbinic Judaism is is simply a man-made artifice, uh, art, um, artifice to substitute for the Mosaic com uh, uh, Covenant after the temple was destroyed. Why did God remove the temple? And has left it in a state of desolation for 2,000 years almost, because it was obsolete. The Mosaic Covenant was not sufficient. It could not save you. No one could be saved under the law, because the law requires perfect obedience, and contains it's and the law is all based on two commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Have you obeyed those commandments your entire life? No, you haven't. No one has, except for the Messiah. In him, his Obedience is accounted to us also. Consider a marriage, a traditional marriage. The husband brings his assets and liabilities, and the wife or the, the bride brings her assets and liabilities, and they become one new thing. They become joined together. Well, in the case of the Messiah, the bridegroom, he brought a death that was the payment for sin. A debt, a payment he did not owe. A debt he did not owe. He owed nothing to the law. In fact, because he fulfilled the law, he inherited all the blessings of the law. Now, the bride... Well, she was a slave to sin. Under the sentence of death. And he purchased his bride. He had paid the penalty for her sins. He had paid the penalty of death with his own life. And he brings all the blessings of God because he kept all the promise, the, the, all the requirements of the law and received all the blessings of the law. Plus, he is the creator. Now, again, Judaism is like, it, it, unless it is fulfilled in Christ, in the Messiah, and I, I don't want to get into the issue of the Christ, Christianity as a religious system, because that's not what Christianity is. Christianity is a relationship with God, between the individual and God through faith in Christ. That's what it is. That's all it is. Christ is Christianity. The Messiah is Christianity. All these religious systems and all the mumbo-jumbo has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. That is the invention of men and women. There were some of them in there, too. No, it's, it's how are we right with God? How can a sinful human being be reconciled to the holy God? Only in Jesus Christ. Never could you be reconciled to God under the law because there, were no, there was no atonement in the law for sin other than sins of ignorance. But if you know what the law requires and you fail to do it, 
you're guilty and there's no sacrifice for that. But there is in Jesus Christ who died for the sins of the entire world, all the sins of the world. So anyone can find salvation in him through faith. That's all God requires, faith. Trust him. He does everything else. He changes your life. He changes your heart. Things you can't do anyway. So the whole Jewish project, the whole Zionist project to create themselves an identity for themselves is silly. See, the, why they needed an identity is because they didn't have Christ. They didn't have the Messiah. Why the Jews today are struggling, you know, what, what are we, why do we exist? What's our purpose? Your purpose was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Your, your future is in him. It's not in the continuation of rabbinic Judaism or reform Judaism or conservative Judaism or anything else. You can only find your meaning in the Messiah and what he accomplished and the new covenant. You can only come to know him. I forgot that. One of the promises of the new covenant is they shall all know God. Not know about him, know him. See, you missed it. There were three Jewish sects at the time of the destruction of the temple. There was the Pharisees, there was the Sadducees, and there was the Christians. The Sadducees perished with the temple because that was their, the Mosaic covenant was their reason to be. The Pharisees had their own system based on the oral law, oral tradition, the oral Torah that didn't come from God. And they didn't need the temple to continue because they existed prior to, well, they were connected with the synagogues, put it that way. So there was a not quite legitimate law uh, system there. The Phar that's why there was this conflict between Jesus and the Pharisees, because their their religion consisted of their oral tradition. It wasn't the law of Moses. It was their oral tradition that was their authority, just like the Talmud is the authority in, in Orthodox Judaism, and Orthodox Judaism is a continuation of the Pharisees. That's what it is. But it has no purpose. See, how, how can Israel, how can you imagine that, that 12 or 14 million people in this world and half that number in, uh, in the land of Palestine is God's purpose? That's his ultimate purpose. Do you think his ultimate purpose is to put the entire law uh, world under the law of Moses? What would that do? The law just makes you guilty. The law shows you your sin. It has no power to save. It has no power to heal. It simply condemns you because of your sin. So rebuilding the temple on, on uh, the Temple Mount, what will that do? It will just condemn you. There's no sacrifices there that can atone for your sin. There's no sacrifices in the law at all for the sin of murder. You can't be atoned for that. You can only be executed for that. Not under the law. But there is salvation in Jesus Christ. And people like David, who committed, uh, committed sins of adultery and murder, how could God overlook that? He certainly didn't wink at it, but he sort of, didn't execute the penalty of the law either, did he? He was looking forward to the cross, knowing that his intention was to pay for the sins of the world, past, present, and future. So only in him is there salvation. Now, and only in Christianity, Judaism is not a universal system of religion. It cannot, it's not designed for that. It was not given to the entire world, only to a particular group. Islam is 
meant to be universal. It is not ethnically limited or anything like tribally limited or anything like that, and it's not uh, the uh, uh, regionally limited or temporally limited. However, it is utterly inadequate because it has no redemption. It has no power to save sinners. It's based on works, just like the law of Moses. He that does them shall work by them, shall live by them. No, see, it's, it, it's not adequate, even though it is not limited to a particular tribe or a particular nation. It is not adequate uh, because God's purpose is to save sinners, not to condemn them, but to save them. And we all are by nature sinners. We have all failed. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We're supposed to be his image. We have all failed to be that. So Islam, and Islam doesn't really have continuity, well, a good solid continuity with either the Mosaic Covenant or Christianity, which it came after. And it certainly is much less adequate have not having a atonement at all, but merely a system of works without even a good system of a, a good standard of law. It's inadequate, even though it's universal. It's inadequate. Only Christianity makes sense, real Christianity, which is a personal relationship with God through faith in Christ. Not talking about these religious systems that call themselves Christianity, like Roman Catholicism. The system is not Christian at all. It just happened. It's, it's a confusion between church and state. Between it, it takes religion and makes it into an institution and a tool of the state. It uses religion. It goes back to Constantine. Uh, a national nationalism of sorts, but you you cannot have an identity. You know, Israel cannot be serving the God of all nations and have a nationalist limited identity. Your identity can only be found in the Messiah. Only in Him can you find fulfillment. Only can you in Him can you find your reason to be and the reason for Israel to be. Only in Him. Nowhere else. You know, like I said, Judaism and the Jewish state um, are not viable as standalone projects. They simply aren't. They only make sense, and not the Jewish state at all. Uh, that was already existed in the past. They only make sense as a link between the promises of the covenant made to Abraham and prior to him and through all the prophets who all look toward the coming of the Messiah. So uh, Israel only makes sense as that link between Abraham and the Messiah. And then uh, Israel and the rest of the world, all those who have faith in the Messiah, in God, find their fulfillment in him together. Those who have faith in God they indeed are the children of Abraham. Whatever your ethnicity, it's whether or not you have faith in God, faith in his Messiah. 